Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fiat Ducato build series. If you're new to the channel, I'm Naz and together with my wife Rosie we're turning this panel van into a tiny home on wheels. In today's video we're going to be moving on to one of the most exciting parts of the build and one of the most scary. We're moving on to the electrics. Let's get right into it. So this is going to be the start of the electrics video. I assume that this is going to span across maybe even a few months. And it's going to be a long one, so uh, I hope you're ready for it. Now you may be looking into the van and thinking, you put a subfloor video up weeks ago, months ago I think even, uh, and you are right, the subfloor was down. But in order to put the DC to DC Victron Orion unit in, I decided to pull the floor up and basically run the 16 mil cable from the van battery to the leisure battery which is going to be terminated in this area uh, through the floor this seems to be the least invasive way of doing it and certainly the neatest way of doing it i just took two pieces of the floor out so i can get access to where i need to to run this cable through so i'm going to start with the dc to dc charger because it seems to be the hardest thing to fit i guess so I bought uh, 10 meters of 16 mil wire. I'm going to run this from the van battery through a 60 amp fuse down through the floor to where my leisure battery is going to be, where I'll then run a 16 mil negative lead to my negative bus bar, which will be grounded directly to the chassis. So let's have a go with this, shall we? <laughs> My first job was to create a tiny wire which connected straight from the battery to the 60 amp fuse because it's really important to have the fuse as close to the battery as possible. Once connected the cable will run down through this pre-existing channel and then down into the back of the van. And that's the cable installed through our 60 amp fuse and then down through the floor trim and through the pre-existing channel ready to go towards the back of the van. It was then just a case of running the cable as neatly as possible through our subfloor to where our batteries are going to be and to where it will be connected to our Victron unit. So there we have it, that's the DC to DC charger cable at least installed. It was quite straightforward, I've done a lot of research into the process so I knew exactly what I, what I needed to do, it was just a case of doing it. I've just cut off the excess and uh, taped up the end of the wire because obviously it is connected to the positive battery terminal so that's ready to be connected once uh, all the components go in in place i do have a 240 volt electric hookup kit that i bought from 12 volt planet so i'm gonna have a look at where i can position the outlet so when i get that open have a look at it yeah i'll pick you up whenever i do anything else electrical so after reading the very brief instructions at great length and contemplating whether this is a job I should even be attempting I decided to do it anyway and I just connected the ground negative and positive wire up to the corresponding ports on the actual hookup and that looks really neat and I was quite happy with myself. Uh, after that it was just a case of screwing everything back together, connecting the port uh, properly and then deciding where it needed to go. Instead of drilling yet another hole in the van I decided to just mount the electric electric hooker point to the underside of our back bumper through a pre-existing hole and then up to where our 240 volt consumer unit is going to be. We're really happy with how this turned out and once the back bumper went on it just looks really discreet and neat. Welcome back to another day on the van belt. The first electrical component I'm going to be running wires for will be our ceiling lights. I've got 25 meters of two core 1.5 millimeter cabling. This is perfect for lighting circuits and it's also good for uh, running USB sockets, uh, the max fan. Before that goes in, I'm just going to run some split conduit around the van, uh, especially in the, the upper parts, just to protect the cable in and make sure it doesn't get damaged further down the line. I've run the cable up from where it's going to be uh, fused and now up to where I'm going to be doing the, the first set of lights. This wiring circuit and the lights, all four lights are going to be run off the same circuit. 
So in order to do that, you can wire them up in, in series or parallel, but you'll get a voltage drop if you wire them up in series. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is, so right here is where I want the first light. So I'm literally going to be making a little loop in, that eventually when I come to fit the lights I'll just cut. I'll tape that up there and then I'll run to the next light. And I'll do that for all four of them, meaning the last light is just going to be an end of a wire and that is going to run through all four lights and then back to the battery. When I come to fit the lights, this is what I'll be working with on the ceiling. I'll chop that, strip the wires, strip the wires of the light and then basically just connect the negative to the negative and then the, ne the negative of this wire to those two negatives, one for the light, one for the other wire and that will run to the next light. I'll do exactly the same thing for the positives, meaning that all four lights will be connected on the same circuit. I thought I'd quickly stop the video here and explain in a little bit more detail how this circuit is actually going to work. So from the 12 volt fuse box we've got one positive and one negative running up to our first set of Wago connectors. In slot 2 of the connectors the positive and negative of the first light go in and then in slot 3 the positive and negative of the initial circuit run to the next set of Wago connectors. This process repeats for each light until we get to the end light where it just connects to some two-way Wago connectors which is essentially just merging the two wires together. Using the three-way and the two-way connectors means that we have a continuous circuit, positives linking positives and negatives linking negatives. I hope that clears things up but if you've got any more questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments. So there we go, that's the lighting circuit done. Relatively straightforward, just taping up the wires for now. Means now I can actually insulate the roof and then drop the cables down through the insulation ready for my ceiling to be complete and put the lights in. So you'll have to excuse me kneeling down, obviously I'm too tall to actually stand up fully in this van. I've basically done exactly what I've done for the lights just with a max fan. So I obviously have installed a max fan and up until now the cables have just been dangling so I've run a 1.5 millimeter wire from where the batteries are going to sit and where the fuse box is going to sit all the way up along to where the back fan cables need to go in uh, above the back doors so to connect the 1.5 millimeter wire to the max fan wires I'm just going to be using these little way go connectors these things are really good for 12 volt systems but uh, in particular uh, systems that are in a moving vehicle. Another good perk of them is if you ever needed to take the fan out for any reason you've literally just got to unclip the way go connector and the wire comes out. So yeah, it, although it's a really good solution it's also not um, a permanent fix even though the connection is really solid. So I'm just going to strip these wires and then put these on and then that will be the max fan wired down to where the fuse box is going to be. Also an another thing to note about wiring the max fan, obviously the cables are white and black. You would automatically assume that black was neutral, as with most cables if you're looking at 12 volt. However, they are labelled, but I'm going to be cutting the labels off. The white is actually the positive and the... no, sorry. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm the same. The black is the positive and the white is the negative. So just keep that in mind if you're wiring yours. <sighs> Here I am telling you that the white is the negative and the black is the positive. And what have I gone and done? I've wired the white up to the positive on the wire I put in. <sighs> And that's what it looks like all installed. Just using two Wago clips connecting the positive and negative of the max fan and the positive and negative of the 1.5mm cable. So it runs from the max fan down through the top pillar above the back doors, down through my main electrical pillar to where the batteries are going to sit and where the cable will eventually be fused. Fast forward in a few months it was time to wire in our diesel heater. So we've got an undermounted diesel heater which is running up through the floor and you can see the duct in there running underneath the frame of our kitchen so it was just as simple as connecting the six millimeter cable to the diesel heater cables through some two-way way go connectors 
it was then just a case of neatly running the cables through the van to where our fuse box is where they'll eventually be fused and connected to the rest of our system and i think that's a good place to finish part one of this electric install video but in part two i'm going to be showing you exactly how we did our entire system from wiring the batteries wiring the solar all the way down to actually connecting the 12 volt appliances to our fuse box. So let's give you a sneak peek of what's to come in part two. If you're interested in any of the products I used during this video, then please feel free to head down to the description where I'll have Amazon links for some of the things that I used. Just a quick mention, they are affiliate links, so if you do purchase through our links, then we make a small kickback at no additional cost to you. And as always, thank you for your support. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below. If you liked the video, drop it a like. If you've got any questions whatsoever about anything I did in this video, then please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Stay tuned for part two of this electric install. Until then, I'll see you next time.